You are tuned in to the Overtime Station, the Mega Mix. What up, what up, what up? Welcome to another episode of Saturday Morning Week in Review. I am your host, Rossi Bell Boa. This is a radio show where we talk about social subjects, music, live interviews, sports talk, and black history. This is um, episode six. We already six weeks into this radio show thing, man. I'm kind of digging it, man. Hope y'all liking it, too. You know what I'm saying? This week, we're going from the week of December 19th to December 25th. Yep, it's Christmas. Christmas time out here, man. I hope everybody having a nice Christmas. Hope y'all got y'all gifts. Everybody having a good time. The kids doing good. You know, everybody got some eggnog in there, some good food in their system, man. So get ready for a nice little radio show this week. You know what I'm saying? First off, I'm going to hit y'all off with a song. First off, we still... Uh, on our on my Bible mixtape that I dropped last week, so we're gonna keep hitting y'all with some of them songs from the Bible mixtape. First off, I'm gonna hit y'all with this song called Moses, and we're gonna be right back with your social subject. Oh yeah. 400 years have now passed since Joseph had moved his family to Egypt. The descendants of Abraham have now grown over two million strong, so God kept His covenant with Abraham. But to Egypt's new pharaoh, the Hebrews were foreigners, and their numbers was frightening. Pharaoh knew nothing about Joseph, so he made them slaves so it wouldn't upset his badness and power. And when their numbers kept increasing, he started killing the sons of the Israelites, until God found a man named Moses. Here is the story of Moses. So Pharaoh had started killing all the male child. So Levi's put their baby in the basket, sent him up the Nile. And Pharaoh's sister found him and raised him for her own. So Moses lived as an Egyptian to the day he was grown. A prince at that, yeah, he had it made. Until one day he saw an Egyptian beating a Hebrew slave. Killed the Egyptian and hit him in the sand. The next day a man spoke about it, so Moses ran. Fled off to my dad, cause Pharaoh was grieved. But little did he know. That God was pleased. He met a man named Jethro and started a family with Jethro's daughters. Jethro was a priest. One day he was tending to his father in law flock on the mountaintop, not knowing it was a holy spot. But he saw with a scent any man in the fright. So he went over and investigated this strange sight. Moses looked over and he seen a bush burning. And he wondered why the bush wasn't burning all the way up. So he walked over to investigate it. And when he looked in the bush, he saw an angel of God. And when he seen him, he was scared, so he covered his eyes up. He covered his face, but the angel spoke and he said, Moses, 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 the Lord has heard the Hebrews cry. And in the Lord's eyes, you can help the Hebrews rise. Get your people out of slavery, that critical work. With your staff, me and you can make miracles work. Gather up the elders for some spiritual birth. Pharaoh, don't let them go. He gonna be pitifully cursed. Even worse, he seen plagues through Egypt and now. May blood fill up the Nile. A plague of the frogs, the plague of the flies, the plague of the livestock, boils in hell, the plague of locusts, the plague of the darkness, plague of the firstborn. And when his firstborn was gone, he was torn. So finally, he said, Moses and the slaves ain't worth it. Until he realized that he lost their service. He took his army on the hunt for the slaves. They saw him coming and they said, Moses, we had it made. Why did you bring us here to the desert to die? Then Moses said, be still, the Lord will open your eyes. Then the angel of God got in front of Egypt's army. Brought darkness over them, so the army went home. Then God said, Moses, why you crying to me? Ride your staff and stretch your hand out over the sea to divide the water so Israel can go through it. Then he parted the sea and told his people, keep it moving. That was Rossi Balboa with the song titled Moses off the Bible mixtape. You know what I'm saying? It's Christmas time, so I gave y'all a mixtape. Y'all can play for the holidays. If y'all want to hear all that rah-rah, you know, check out my little mixtape where I'm kind of trying to teach you a little bit about the word. You feel me? So we're going to go ahead and get off into these social subjects this week. Uh, First off, I wanted to talk about Jay-Z. Jay-Z had uh, made headlines this week saying, talking about verses, 
saying that he don't believe nobody could stand on stage with him. It wasn't a chance in hell. And uh, no matter how long it would go, couldn't nobody stand a chance with him. You know, it's, it's, it's a pretty good debate. You know, it's only a few people out here. People say Lil Wayne. I heard a few say Eminem. You know, it's a few people they throwing out there. But it's a nice little topic, man. You know, I kind of wanted to chime in on that. Jay-Z was a pretty bold statement, but, I mean, if anybody can say it, it's him. I mean, I know how Jay-Z get down. He a, he a hard artist, you know, the hell of a got the body of work and, uh, you know, the music to bag it up and the lyrics, too, you know. Um, I would just like to know where would he be if Tupac and Bigger was still living, you know. He kind of took the, on that throne when both of them left because they was running it. But when Jay they passed, Jay-Z just – took that torch and ran with it. So, I mean, you know, uh, some people say Nas, but I mean, I don't think Nas really got the body of work. He got the, he got the eat the joint, but you know, I don't know if it, you know, it's, it's a, it's a, it's a pretty good debate because Jay Z, you have to have that body of work to go against him. Lil Wayne might be a good little choice, you know, but I think that music kind of different, but at the same time, it's about the only person I could say to probably could go head to head with Jay Z. So, I wanted to chime in on that, you know. Let me know what y'all think about old Jay Z saying can't nobody stand with him on stage. Also, this week we had the rapper from LA, Dracchio the Ruler. He passed away. He was stabbed at a, a LA festival on December the nineteenth. Uh, Los Angeles Times called him the most original West Coast stylist in decades. So, you know, I wasn't really up on his music. You know, it's West Coast. But I, I'm, I'm seeing he's pretty big up there. You know, he had the interviews and the songs and stuff. You know, he was on Vlad and No Jumper. And, and uh, you know, just, you know, it's just a, a messed up situation. Another another rapper we done lost too early. You know, it's, it's getting old, man. These rappers, man, you know... They out there living that life, man. You know, sometimes, man, you got to think about your family and that bag. If you the bread runner, man, why would you want to be out here beefing with these fools that ain't got nothing to lose? They'll take your life and just want the, the claim of fame of of doing something to you. Like, you know what I'm saying? These rappers, man, y'all got to kind of got to try to stay out the way and just do your music, man. Don't tend to all this nonsense because it's really nonsense, man. I'm, I'm pretty sure if he could take it back. He want to be here for his, his 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 kids or his child. I'm not sure how many kids he got, but um, I'm pretty sure he want to be here for that child, man. So, man, rest in peace, Dracchio, the ruler. I'm seeing he had a his 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 body of work was 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 rising, and he was becoming a popular rising star in the rap game, man. So, rest in peace, Dracchio, the ruler. Next up this week, we had. NBA Youngboy released a new video called Black Ball. And um, the the the, the uh, thing about that, he had his face painted, I guess, in parts of the video. And I guess he had came out and said somebody liked painting his face or something. I just think that was crazy. That was something I wanted to chime in on. What y'all think about Youngboy painting his face? Is that weird? I see some people saying it's a ritual. Like the raccoon eyes mean something. You know, I don't want to get into all that, but I just wanted to chime in on uh, NBA Youngboy doing something different. They say be original, but I don't know how original that is, but painting your face like a rock star or something. But he had it painted like, you know, like a rock star or whatever. But, you know, everybody got their own opinion about it, saying different things about it. So that's something I wanted to chime in on. NBA Youngboy Black Ball video with his face painted. And also this week, we had the Memphis rapper Black Youngster. He was uh, known for beefing with Young Dolph when Young Dolph was living. You know, he supposedly shot up his car 100 times, uh, 100, with 100 bullets, you know what I'm saying? And uh, after the passing this week, Black Youngster dropped a new video called I'm Assuming. And in the video, he's standing in a graveyard like, but what's what's noticeable noticeable about the video is the main um headstone he's standing beside 
has the name Thornton on it. And Adolph, uh, and Young Dolph's real name is Adolph Thornton Jr. <clears throat> so that's kind of crazy for and bold of him to, you know, do a new video with a tombstone with Thornton on it. And you know, he, he ain't holding no, no, no holes barred in the video. He talking like, you know what I'm saying? About his ops and, you know, kind of making it seem like he talking about Young Dolph and kind of, kind of, uh, joking about the death or whatever, man. I just think that's kind of bold. And that's what I'm saying. These new, new day rappers, man, they don't care nothing about no respect for the dead or nothing. They, they like, damn that. If you we was beef when you was alive, it's still fuck you when you're dead, I guess. So it's just crazy situation, man. I saw the video and I was immediately like, dang, that's, that's crazy. So, you know, I don't really approve all that i looked at the video once and that's it for me you know what i'm saying i ain't with all that you know this and the dead and stuff but that's what they doing these days so chime in about what y'all think about black youngster with his new video i'm assuming with the name thornton on the tombstone we're gonna hit y'all off with another song man we'll be right back with y'all oh yeah after 400 years of slavery God rescued Israel through their leader Moses and through his mighty miracles. After Moses parted the sea, he washed all Egypt's army into the sea, drowning all them. And then the Passover celebration was an annual reminder of their escape from slavery. This is the Exodus. So the people trusted Moses and his brother Aaron, dancing, sang songs with his sister Mary. In the desert for three days without no water, the people complained Moses shouldn't even bother. The water was bitter, so it was no good. Then the Lord showed Moses a piece of wood. Moses threw it in the water, and it became sweet. Then the people started grumbling about food to eat. They said in Egypt we sat around pots of meat, and since you brought us to the desert, we've been hungry for weeks. Then the Lord came to Moses, and this is what he said. Tell the people from heaven, I'm a rain bread. While Aaron was telling them, they looked around. The glory of the Lord appeared in the cloud. Told Moses in the morning that be filled with bread. And don't think he hadn't heard what the people had said. And that evening, quail came and covered the camp. And then the next day, dew came and left. And when the dew was gone, flakes of frost appeared. And when the sun grew hot, it disappeared. It tasted like wafers made with honey. So quail and manna was there for the hungry. The Lord said, gather enough for one day. But take enough for two days on the six days. No work on the seventh, but some had to have it. When they gathered too much, the next day it had maggots. The Israelites kept going from place to place. When they got thirsty again, the grumbling replaced the faith. So Moses said, God, what am I to do with these people? They gon' stone me if I don't get water for the heat. So the Lord told Moses, Staff like a rock, then Walla came out the rock, but the complaining didn't stop. Then the Amalekites attacked. Moses said to Joshua, Get some men for battle, cause God is watching us. Moses watched from the top of the hill from the beginning. When he raised his arms up to the sky, they was winning. When his arms got tired and dropped, they was losing. So whose side do you think God was choosing? So her and Aaron held Moses' arm toward the sun. The whole time to Joshua and the Israelites won. Put it on the scroll and make sure Joshua hear it. And from heaven, completely wiped out a melic memory. When Moses talked to God on the mountain, it was storm. So everybody else in the camp was scared to come. He went up Mount Sinai and Moses was handy. Laws for the people, the Ten Commandments. How to build the tabernacle and all the instructions of how to worship him, the God above them. When Moses would come down from the mountain, his face would light up. So he would need a veil to cover his face up. His face is radiant, Moses like no other. Then the complaining came from his sister and his brother. See, Moses had a family by a Cushite wife. And that's something Miriam and Aaron didn't like. They said, had the God spoken to us just like him? Then God came, made a visit to them. Came down on a pillar of clouds, stood at the entrance. And he said, through prophets, I reel myself in visions. Or in a dream, I talked to Moses face to face. Clearly no riddles, you can never take his place. Then he left. And he left Miriam with leprosy To find out the camp for seven days for a jealousy They had to pass through Edom so Moses rolled a ladder This is your brother Israel and we all gather Can we pass through your land to get through our land? Let's go in that milk and honey that the Lord planned So Esau people said, nah, you can't pass through And if you try 
brother passed through, we gonna attack you. So Moses and the people had to take the long route. They sent spies out to search the promised land out. Only Caleb and Joshua wanna take over the land, but the rest of the spies said they ain't have a chance. All right, right now I got on the line my dog, my brother from another mother, my homeboy Melly Bone. What's going on with you, Melly Bone? Oh man, everything the same on my end, just chilling, man. Just seeing everything cool with you, my dog. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, good. Okay, okay. Yeah, man. We like to do a little three question segment uh on my radio show. So I'm gonna jump right into it. First off, I wanna ask you like how did y'all start the group ODC Overdose Click? Oh man, look, back in nineteen uh ninety three it was like it's a whole, it was like a group of us, you know, we was all friends, you know, friends that grew up and shit, uh, all together and shit, but it was just a couple of us out of the little group, you know, to try to do a little, uh, that wanted to make news, uh-huh. you know, me, Big Bass, Pookie D, Cheeky Cheek, and Crisis Around Dog, you know, so we got together, we did our little music and stuff, we just, uh, and you know. It, it was it was straight it was straight you know at that time you know we we think what we we know what we go down like you know so but we did and we put put it to the streets you know people liked it people started liking it so you know we rolled with it right right see like I was telling you man coming from that area myself. It seemed like the whole hood was ODC at that time. You know what I'm saying? You know, everybody was riding that wave. Everybody in the hood knew every song, every lyric. We all fuck with that. We all seemed like we was ODC at that time. You feel me? Right, right, right. Hell yeah. So uh, that's what's up, dog. My second question, man, I wanted to know, like, how did y'all get with uh, Greenway to put out y'all album? Um, My homeboy Money. Uh, you know, that was, that was really torn, uh, crisis around on, uh, homeboy. I think it's his family, you know. He yeah. was homeboy and shit. He, uh, was like, he liked what we were doing. You know, he was like, he had somebody, he wanted us to hide it, you know, Greenway, cause Greenway was doing this, 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 this thing. And he was, uh, he wanted us, uh, to holler at Greenway and see what we could do with him. You know, shut out the Greenway for the little healthy shot and that and shit. Right, so, right. So we hollered at him. It was all from then. Yeah, cause y'all was like on the uh on the compilation first, wasn't you? Then he dropped y'all album, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We was on the little compilation. He brought out, and you know, he grabbed a couple of people, you know, a couple of groups off the little compilation that he was working with, and yeah, we was one of them. Right, right, right. Here, yeah, we used to be on that that too, that compilation and y'all album. You know what I'm saying? Y'all were making hell of a noise. Nigga, money's free. You already don't Man, right. <laughs> that was a hell of a sale. Yeah. <laughs> Stayed on that money's free. <laughs> hell yeah. All right. Uh, man, I want to uh, uh, switch it up a little bit, man. Usually I ask somebody, like, what kind of advice would they give a young rapper or something trying to get in the game? But, man, by us coming from Casey and you know how the streets is now, I want to know what kind of advice would you give a, a young a young nigga in the, in the hood you know what I'm saying? Trying to stay afloat or trying to, you know, just, just, what, what, what kind of advice would you give somebody in our, from our hood? Man, one thing I would say is, man, whatever you're doing with your craft, man, just stick with it, man. It's going to be a lot of outside noise about what you're doing. You know, it's going to be people that don't like what you're doing. You know what I'm saying? But it's, it's all about what you like. It's about what you're doing, not what everybody else is doing. So you got to be on top of your own shit. You know, before you get you bring the shit to anybody else, man, because if you just listening to the outside noise all the time, it probably really ain't gonna never work out because you're gonna be fighting no demons. But fuck that. Well, you gotta stick to your stick to your craft, man. Stay on your grind, man. Don't let nothing sidetrack you and get you off the shit. Man, that's great advice, dog, for real. And I I, I wanted to ask you that because you like big bro. You know what I'm saying? In the hood, you're a lot of, you're a lot of niggas big bro. You know what I'm saying? Even if you might know it, not know it. You know what I'm saying? I think everybody look at Melly Bone as like a big brother, bro. And you know what I'm saying? I had to get you on my radio show and give you your flowers. You know what I'm saying? Cause I don't know if anybody else have the, the they should, but man, I got to give Melly his flowers, man. Cause you, you was a motivation for me growing up. Like to be real, no knock to any, I love cheeky cheek. I love Christ the rhyme down, love big bass, 
Love everybody in ODC, but Millie Bone was always my favorite South Fay rapper, man. <laughs> Millie, Millie Bone and, and uh and Low C the Hustler. Y'all was y'all was the guys that got me when I you know, especially when y'all had that uh um commercial on, on B E T. I used to stay yeah, up yeah. man, I used to stay up just to see that commercial be like, I know them, like you know what I'm saying? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Y'all, yeah, I think was it uncut? It's like he used to come on, I think when uncut was on, I can't really remember what show, but it used to be a specific show would show y'all a commercial. And, right, right. And you, yeah, yeah you, you, I think you had the grill on that mother. I'm like, look at Melly Bone here. That influenced the hell out of me, man. You know what I'm saying? Nigga, we had the neighborhood out that day. <laughs> it, was, it, was a, it was a celebration that day, bro, because it was out. They was out that day. <laughs> yeah, 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 bro. I'm telling you, bro. I stayed up every night just to look at that one commercial over and over and over every night, nigga. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I like that. That was the shit. <laughs> right, right. That was like, it was slick a video to us, you know, it was just a commercial, you know, promoting the album, but that was a hell of a, hell of a way to promote it, you know what I'm saying, on BET and stuff, you know, but at that time, man, it was hard to get shine. So, uh, I don't know if right. the Greenway put that together, I don't know who put that together, but they did a motherfucker with that. Right, right, right. Yeah. yeah. Hell yeah, man. So yeah, I just wanted to give you your flowers, man. Shout out to Melly Bone. Shout out to ODC. Free cheeky cheek. You know what I'm saying? Uh, man, I just, I just wanted to, man, that, get, put a little spotlight on you, man. Let, let the world hear from Melly Bone, man. Cause you know, we, 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 we was fucking with you out here tough. You feel me? Yeah, yeah. That's, that's what's up, man. Free cheeky cheek, my nigga. Free my uh, nephew, you did, uh, you did our Quan Bates, too. Man, what you said, that's my club buddy. Me and Quan used to hit the club and shake life. God damn, I miss my nigga, man. Free to you, our Quan, man. <laughs> <laughs> for sure, for sure. Well, shout out to Millie Bone, man. We're going to hit y'all off with another song, man. I appreciate your time and effort, dog. Word, word, that's what's up. All right. Desert for 40 years, the Israelites were wandering. God finally blessed it, but you see no one was lacking up. This is the story of Joshua. In the desert 40 years, God finally blessed me. For all they reveling, he had to teach a lesson. He said you made your way around this hill long enough. And I have been with you and none of you was lacking up. Turn up north through your brother Esau's land. They will be afraid of you, but don't provoke no man. Cause he ain't giving that land to Esau descendants. Israel will head into a land with more divisions. Passed through and ran into King Shion. His army and his sons came for war in Hasbon. God said he's in your hands, him and his country. Strike him down with the sword and take it from him. They did, God said, on that day he would bless them. Put the fear of them in every nation under heaven. Left no one alive but livestock and cattle. Then King Og and his army marched to meet in battle. The Lord said, do the same as the last king. Beside livestock and plunder, kill everything. From King Og, they took away 60 cities. And when they got to the Jordan, Moses was forbidden. But God told him he could look over and see the land. And encouraged Joshua to be a strong man. Went through the laws again and then he blessed the tribe. Sung songs, climbed up Mount Nebo and died. God said, Joshua, Moses, my servant, is dead. I want you to lead your people to the land instead. I will give you every place that you set your feet. No one can stand up against you, because you have me. So Joshua sent two spies to bring feedback. They went into the house of prostitute rehab. The king Jericho was told that they were spies. He told rehab, bring them out, but she told them hi. She told the spies that the whole country melted in fear. Remember me and my family when you come back here. Across the river, marched around Jericho City. Blow trumpets and yelled until they showed pity. The wall to the city collapsed and they ran in. And killed every man, woman, and kid. All except for rehab, the prostitute, and her family too. Cause she knew the truth. That God was the one and only God in heaven. But they lost the battle through the eight can sin. He is told the bony things had God depleted. And when they battled AI, they got defeated. Joshua asked God why did they lose the fight God let him know that somebody wasn't living right When they found out they stoned Achan and buried him Battled AI again, this time they conquered him They conquered great kings from the north and south And all 31 kings 
was wiped out In seven years of battle, Joshua grew old By then Israel had the promised land and control Divided the land and dismissed the armies Told the tribe their enemies their own responsibility Sent the people away to their own inheritance So the nation of Israel, Joshua carried Joshua died at the age of 110 In the land he inherited, they buried him Joshua knew that each battle he could never lose Faith in God, truth. All right, right now we're going to get into our black history segment of the show. This is where I like to talk about a little bit about somebody from our black history. This week I want to talk about Marie Van Britten Brown. She was um, born in Queens, uh, born and raised in Queens. And she's the inventor of the home security system. Um, since 1993, property crime has fallen in U.S. by 69 percent, and a big, big part of that is because of Marie Van Britten Brown. Excuse me, her name is kind of long, so I'm kind of messing it up. Marie Van Britten Brown. She um, came up with the home security system. She drilled three hole peepholes in her door, attached a camera that could move between the three holes, and installed monitors through the premises so she can speak, so she can see, and uh, added a two way radio system so she could speak to whoever's outside. And uh, then she got a remote control to uh, lock and unlock the door. And to top it off, she made a panic button. To have the cops on speed dial. And in 1969, the patent office acknowledged her as the primary creator of the home security system. So shout out to Marie Van Britten Brown. You know what I'm saying? For making sure our homes are secure. That's a big part of how we live these days. And just know there was a black woman that invented that home security system. So shout out to Marie Van Britten Brown. All right, right now we're going to do a little bit of sports talk. We're going to start with the NBA. Uh, in, the, in the East, we still got the Nets leading the division, at leading the conference at 21-9. and nine. Yeah, my Bulls still in second place, 19-10. and 10. And in third place, we got the Milwaukee Bucks at 22-13. and 13. In the West, we got the Suns still leading at 26-5. and five. The Warriors number two at 26 and six, and the Jazz at 22 and nine. And in the NFL, still no major shakeups. We just really waiting on the playoffs. Everybody that was leading the division still leading the division. Only big game I can see coming up this Sunday would be probably between uh, the Patriots and Buffalo. It's gonna be a good game. Decide kind of how they division going. Pretty much all the division leaders still the same. You got Dallas, you got uh, Tampa Bay, you got, uh, I think Arizona's still on top. I don't know, the Rams might be the one that took over that division, but between the Rams and uh, Arizona, uh, let's see, then you got Green Bay, and then in the, um, the um, AFC, you got the Titans still leading the division. Got a big win on Thursday night this week against San Francisco. Uh, then you got, like I said, the Patriots and the uh, Bills going at it this week. And I believe the Ravens still winning their division. And you got Kansas City. So, man, really, we just waiting for the uh, playoffs on this NFL season, man. It's going it's to be a good-looking playoff. Uh, so, you know, that's your, your um, weekend review on the sports. I want to appreciate y'all. Y'all still tuned in. This is episode six of Weekend Review. I appreciate y'all if y'all still tuned in with me. Hope everybody had a good Christmas. And I hope y'all tune in next week when I have a whole new episode on all new subjects, new live interview, and everything, man. So just stay tuned with your boy, Rossi, Bell Boy, Overtime Studios, the Mega Mix. Oh, yeah.